Adonai, your God will raise up a prophet like me from among your own people. To that prophet, you must listen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Anne Marit Lila Vera. I have been part of this church community for 14 years, since I was three. I am honored to stand here before you today. Mike Kinman's sermon after the Las Vegas shooting touched on how sad it is that we are shocked for a few days by school shootings or sexual abuse scandals, but then we become immune. We go back to the concerns and distractions of our everyday lives. This may be re reality for many adults, but my experience of it as a youth is different. Tragic events like this stay in my mind. I don't become immune. After that sermon, I emailed my kinman and asked to speak with him. I told him that I respect the value of listening to people who have dedicated their lives to ministry, but it would also be valuable to allow speak to you allow youth to speak from the pulpit and not just on Youth Sunday once a year. He agreed. We got into a deep conversation and he invited me to speak as part of the Women of Color series in this season of Epiphany. In developing this sermon, I have worked with Mike, my parents, fellow youth, and other adults in my life. What I have realized is youth have their own voice. In a society that states children are the hope of the future, we need to empower children and youth to use that voice. My message is not of blame, but a reminder. A few weeks ago, I asked my fellow youth some questions. One, what is it like to be part of this congregation? And two, what is it like to be a youth in today's society? After speaking with our middle school youth, I realized how tough their stage of life is. They're in the middle of childhood. They're not elementary school kids who are learning basic, basic subjects, but they are also not high school kids who are nearing adulthood. They're kind of stuck in the middle, and a lot of their problems are overlooked. When I asked the middle schoolers to speak up, a lot of them talked about how they felt schools Parents and grown-ups didn't hear their voices. One young woman I spoke to talked about how she was being cyberbullied. The adults wanted to protect her. They wanted to have a meeting to solve the problem. But the girl said, I want to be in that meeting. I want to tell the bullies what I'm feeling. I don't want the teacher to take over and think that I'm helpless and that she has to fix the situation. This girl wanted to confront the bullies herself. She just wanted the support behind her. Sometimes, well-meaning adults, when they try to protect us, when they try to shield us from hard situations, can end up silencing our voices. One of the words that constantly popped up from the high school youth that I spoke to was the word contradiction. So often youth hear, you'll get to that later, or when you grow up. And the question I want to ask myself, and those older than me, and those younger than me, is what does it mean to be grown up? I am 17 years old. I have a brother who is a gang member, a heroin addict, and has been in and out of my life since I was 10. I have gone through experiences that would be much harder for someone older than me and I have had to help my, and support my parents in ways that I would not have thought was a kid's job. But at the same time, I might want a cute boyfriend and to get the most Instagram followers. <laughs> Am I a kid or a grown-up? And what about my mom, Yolanda? She and I can sit on the couch and watch SpongeBob and laugh hysterically. But she also gets up at 5 in the morning to run a large medical clinic in South Los Angeles. In this idea of growing up, there is a sense of playing the game of catch-up. To a 17-year-old, a 25-year-old, 
will say, you'll understand when you grow up. But to a 25-year-old, a 50-year-old might say that. And a 75-year-old might say that to the 50-year-old. Which one is the true grown-up? Who has the wisdom? To me, wisdom is not defined in years, but in how much you truly understand and how much passion you have for what, for what you are sharing with those around you. Every day, you can learn something new, and sometimes you may be surprised who that teacher is. Many of us have experienced the grown-up table and the kids' table. We have heard terms like the adult world and the kids' world. We hear these labels that separate us, but we all live in the same world. We are just at different stages of how we look at it. There is a beauty and a power in sharing our different views on things that allows both adults and youth to learn and grow. Some of the best relationships between adults and youth develop when youth are treated more as equals. My government class at Eagle Rock High School is a great but unfortunately rare example of a genuine opportunity to bridge the gap between the kids' table and the adult table. I find myself talking about topics such as illegal immigration or the death penalty. These are not just class assignments, but real life, serious issues in our world. This class challenges me to understand and articulate both sides of these issues, clarify where I stand, and find my powerful voice in discussion and debate. On the last day before winter break, I was sitting in my English teacher's classroom, who has been my teacher now for two years. In that span of two hours, the way he viewed me changed from seeing me as just a student who doesn't fully understand English literature to seeing me as a person who's capable of amazing creative writing. This happened simply through conversation, through creating real human connection versus just staying in our roles as student and teacher. I have known Jeremy since I was in fifth grade, and he has been one of the most consistent adults in my life who has never treated me as just a kid except for when he had to enforce the no cell phones rule in youth group. <laughs> Isak has also been one of those adults that has always treated me as an equal. And through the process of developing this sermon, Mike has always treated me as an equal and, always, and has always recognized the power of my voice. In our church, everyone is welcome to the table, whether they are a baby, or the oldest member of the congregation. There is no doctrine of you are not mature enough to understand what it means to take the bread and the wine. Instead, the message at All Saints is that whoever you are, you are welcome at the table. There are people in the congregation that are not comfortable with the idea of youth serving them communion. I'd ask them to think, if I were to serve communion now, and then I dedicated my life to ministry and came back years later and served communion again. The only thing that would have changed is my age and the way I look, not my belief in God or my idea about the sacraments. I have had a hard time with the idea of someday you will grow up. Someday this world will be yours. We are here now. We live in this world now and we want it to be a good place for us and for everyone else. Epiphany means a moment of sudden re revelation or insight. Through hearing my words, I hope that I have provided some revelation or insight for you. My voice and the voice of the youth around you may lead you to those moments on a more regular basis, especially if you give them the same opportunity that I was given. Thank you. Amen.